Hello all, and welcome in. We're so glad you've joined us for another edition of the Book Nerd Diaries. Life can be rough sometimes, so please pull up a chair here in the library and relax for a while as we dive deep into the latest books we've crossed off our endless to-read list. Please be warned that spoilers lie ahead, and some content might not be suitable for all listeners, so please go check out the show notes for content warnings regarding today's book and discussion before moving ahead with the episode. Ready? Then let's get our book nerd on. There are few words more comforting in the entire English language than home. Throughout my life, I've lived in many different places and had to find a way to rebuild my life anew with each new roof I've lived under. With each of these changes, I've slowly gained the knowledge that home means far more than just a building with four walls. Home, in the end, means safety. It means a place where you can lay down your burdens for a while and simply exist as a person. It's where you are always welcome, even when you feel like you don't belong anywhere else. The marvelous novel that we'll be talking about today, Gallant by V.E. Schwab, is all about someone searching for their own home. Having been pushed around and mistreated for as long as she can remember, she often feels like a ghost in her own life. Ironically enough, the belonging she seeks might just be found in a house filled with ghosts. As our book opens, the master of the house discovers a mouse that has taken up residence in his garden wall. Grabbing the unfortunate creature, he clasps it in his hand, and when he opens it again, the mouse has turned to ash. He then returns its remains to the earth, like a strange sort of gardener, hoping for something to bloom. Next, we meet our protagonist, Olivia Pryor, as she hides in the garden shed of her boarding school, Marylands. One of her fellow students had turned up the heat on a pot without warning, and she had ended up with a painful burn on her hand that she is currently nursing. One of the school's matrons, Matron Agatha, finds her on her way back and Olivia instantly knows that she's in trouble. Matron Agatha explains that Olivia was supposed to have been helping to peel potatoes for supper as part of her chores. For failing to do so, she is being sent to bed immediately without any supper of her own. Olivia complies, having no other choice, but not before getting some retaliation of her own. Having previously discovered Matron Agatha's hiding spot, Olivia grabs some cookies and clementines from Matron's private stash. Having acquired her treasures, she then takes them over to her bed to eat them as her supper. As she eats, she pulls out a journal that is all that she has left of her mother. In the journal are a bunch of increasingly scattered notes that appear to be addressed to her father. On the very last page is a note to Olivia herself. In this ominous note, Olivia's mother warns her to stay away from Gallant, though Olivia does not know what that means yet. The next day, Olivia is sitting in the kitchen, dutifully peeling potatoes for supper. She finds herself pulled away from her work, however, when she is called to the head matron's office. To Olivia's great surprise, the head matron informs her that her time at Maryland's is coming to an end, before handing her a letter. In the letter, the writer presents himself as Olivia's long-lost uncle, Arthur. Arthur claims that he has been desperately searching for her, and writing similar letters to schools and orphanages all over the country ever since her mother's disappearance. He assures her that a loving home is waiting for her, and that he wishes for her to come live with him. After packing up her very few belongings, Olivia is led to a waiting car, which is to take her to her new home, Gallant. Naturally, Olivia recognizes that name from the note her mother left behind, which piques her attention, 
and getting away from Maryland's once and for all is far too good a chance to pass up. After a lengthy journey and a detour halfway through for gas, Olivia and the driver reach what turns out to be a grand, sprawling estate. The driver takes out her bags and bids her a fond farewell before driving away, leaving her to knock on the door. Instead of being greeted by her uncle, Olivia is met at the door by a woman who seems rather puzzled to see her. Olivia has never been able to speak, and so she hands the woman Uncle Arthur's letter as an explanation. The woman reads the letter, then finally invites her in. As Olivia takes her first steps into Gallant, the master of the house lurks in the shadows, waiting for their moment to rise. Once Olivia is in the house, the woman and a man, who introduce themselves as Hannah and Edgar, discuss what to do about the letter. As the two chat, another young man, who turns out to be Olivia's cousin Matthew, enters the room. He tells Olivia that his father and Olivia's uncle passed away over a year ago and could not possibly have sent the letter. She cannot be allowed to live at Gallant, Matthew continues, but she will be allowed to spend the night until another car can be sent for her. She is led to a spare room, where she sets down her belongings. Knowing that she does not have much opportunity to spend time in such a lavish mansion, she decides to take a long, warm bath. When she finishes her bath, she finds a meal set out for her, which she eats gratefully. Olivia then goes to bed and drifts off to sleep, wondering who possibly could have sent the mysterious letter. If not her uncle, then someone or something must have summoned her to Gallant. Whoever or whatever it was has drawn her into a world of mystery, darkness, and magic that she never could have imagined. Despite the very clear dangers that come with spending time at Gallant, it's the first place that Olivia has had anything like family, and she is willing to do whatever she can to keep it, no matter what the cost. It looks like we need to step away for just a moment, dear book nerds. But don't worry, we'll be right back after this very quick break. Don't go anywhere. Are you an author, fellow podcaster, or small business owner looking to spread the word about your product or service? Then let us help you. We offer a number of affordable monthly advertising packages in various price ranges. So if you'd like to hear your ad here in future episodes, please head on over to our page at ko-fi.com slash bndpod and click on the shop tab to see what works best for you. Again, that's ko-fi.com slash bndpod. Then click on the shop tab. We can't wait to work with you. As veteran listeners of our show might already be aware, V. E. Schwab is by far one of my favorite authors working today. From her marvelous Shades of Magic series, to her villainous duology, to her recent novel, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, she can do absolutely no wrong in my eyes. I've even covered her book, This Savage Song, for episode 39 of this very show, in case you'd like to check it out for yourself. It seems only natural, then, that Gallant would eventually find its way onto my list. What I love so much about her work is that not a single one of her novels is ever the same. With the Shades of Magic series, you get a sweeping and unique epic of high fantasy. With the Villains duology, there's a mix of Frankenstein-esque sci-fi and a Marvel superhero movie. If you describe these books to me with no further context, I probably never would have guessed that they were by the same author, and thus is her genius. In Gallant, we find an elegantly crafted Victorian Gothic tale, with flavors of fantasy and horror mixed in for good measure. Right from the jump, we meet the mysterious master of the house, who looms over the entire story like a shadow. With his enigmatic presence in the narrative, you know right away that something both magical 
and terrifying is on the horizon. He rules over a mysterious mirror world that lies beyond the garden walls of Gallant, waiting for his moment to escape into ours. The only people with the ability to stand between him and his grisly goal are those of Olivia's bloodline. The master of the house uses Gallant to draw them in like a fly in a spider's web, then tortures them with horrifying visions until they either lose their minds or their lives. As one of the last priors left standing, Olivia must now venture beyond the wall herself to put an end to his tyranny once and for all. In this aspect of the narrative, you get the flavor of a traditional hero's journey, but with the bleak grandeur of stories like Rebecca or Wuthering Heights mixed in. The overall tone, then, is a strange mixture of grim and hopeful that makes the novel almost intoxicating from the first page to the last. The world can often be a horrible place, Schwab tells us, but that does not mean it's not worth fighting for. In the end, I think that Gallant would be a perfect read for those who love a good dark fairy tale. The book for me hits a similar note to Melissa Albert's The Hazelwood or Neil Gaiman's beloved classic Coraline. In both of these examples, the author gives us a narrative that is both charmingly whimsical and nightmare-inducing all at once, and I believe that Gallant fits in beautifully right alongside them. No handsome princes are waiting to be kissed here, nor any fairy godmothers to magically dress you up for the ball. There is no real happily ever after here either. In this book, the legends have teeth and monsters wait in the shadows for their time to rule. I'll reiterate here that some topics covered in this story might not be suitable for everyone, particularly when it comes to mental health, so please be sure to check out the content warnings in our show notes before reading this book for yourself. With that, dear fellow book nerds, we've made it to the end of our discussion for today. It's always an honor to share the stories I love with you here in the library, and I'm already excited to look for the next one. Before we say goodbye to you for now, we would like to give out some very special thank yous. Firstly, thank you so much to Julie, our wonderful sister Katie, and our newest team member Anthony for being our dear subscribers over at patreon.com slash bndpot. This podcast is one of the main sources of income for us, so your kind monthly contributions help us out more than you know. If you, too, would like to get perks like early ad-free episodes, two exclusive episodes a month, notes, scripts, our monthly newsletter, a special role in our new Discord server, and a shout-out at the end of each episode, we hope you'll join them. We're so grateful as well. To anyone who has taken the time to share our episodes on social media, subscribed and left us a review via Apple Podcasts or their app of choice, or told the people in their lives about us. These are the best free ways to help bring more people to the library, and independent operations like ours depend on word of mouth to grow, so every bit truly helps. Next week, Friday, May 20th, a new bonus episode is on the way for our wonderful $5 and up subscribers on Patreon. And we'll see you right back here in two weeks for another edition of the Book Nerd Diaries. See you then! The Book Nerd Diaries is written, edited, researched, and hosted by me, Amber Wilchin. Thank you so much to the wonderful Astrofret from Pixabay for the use of our theme song, The Grand Entrance. All other music and sound effects you hear during this episode are also provided by the amazing folks of Pixabay, so please check out the show notes for full credits. If you'd like to connect with us online, please follow us on Instagram or Twitter at BNDPod, on Facebook at Book Nerd Diaries, or via our website at bndpod.wordpress.com. If you have any comments, questions, 
or ideas for future episodes to send my way, please feel free to drop us an email anytime at bndpod at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time all, please be good to yourselves because the world needs you. And don't forget to support your local library.